welcome to my video today. I am diving right in to my Project Life album for last year. And the first thing I'm going to do here, what you're seeing me do, is just I'm flipping through to see what needs to happen because I know that there are a few things that I still need to do. Like right here is a pocket that doesn't have some paper or some cards that needs I need to pop that in there. I also definitely know that I need to do my journaling. So I'm just trying to get an idea of what I need to do. I also would like to do a few embellishing uh, in a couple different spots. So that's what we're going to do today. Don't forget to check out my membership perks. I have three separate tiers. I have a super simple tier here on YouTube. You can just join for $4.99 and then you get all of my exclusive videos. We have a $7.99 option that gets you access to the Facebook group. We just had a live hangout where we just did some crafting together and then I have the $14.99 option and that gets you access to everything. I have an exclusive website where I have past classes and videos and content that you can check out. So make sure you check out those perks. They're always listed in the YouTube description below or over on my website. The other thing that I'm going to start doing, this is a new adventure for me, is I am going to start releasing digital product, specifically uh, digital products for pocketed style cards. So I've already released a couple to my membership group um, for them to try out and I'm getting feedback from them and really I'm creating it because there's some things that I need and I want and so I thought I would create it and then also uh, release it to as a perk in my membership group so make sure you check that out. So I just grabbed my Stampin' Up! Basic design pattern paper. These are just basic designs. They usually come out with a new set of designs each year in the color family. I pulled out some red and that's what you see here. Uh, in July, I did a uh, 4th of July Americana type theme. All last year, I believe that for the most part, I used pattern paper and then the Ali Edwards stories by the month. I believe that is what I ended up using for all of last year. So this was a set of paper that I had that was very red, right, red, white, and blue themed. And so I just needed some paper that coordinated with that. And then I will also use that basic paper in October. I'm going to need a few things in October. And so I will use that. So the first thing I do is I just go through and I fill those spaces. I'm not worried about journaling here. I'm not worried about embellishing anything extra. I want to fill in the spots. August is pretty good because I did work on that. I do need to do journaling for this entire album, which we will be tackling in my next video. So on Monday, we will be talking about journaling for Project Life, and I will be covering that. And for part of that video, I will be tackling all of the journaling in this album. Right here, I had a spot that was left from these 12 by 12 larger photos, and so I slipped some photos in there. Those Photos are actually from September, I believe, and so I actually just slipped them into that spot because I have them. Then I have this photo here that will go on the back of my calendar piece, um, and it is just a photo that actually the school took, and Andrew happened to be in that photo, and so I just uh, snagged it from uh, online, and then that's, a, that's why it is in a vertical uh, positioning and not horizontal, which is what I would usually do. Um, so I'm just going to add some paper here. This is yellow. October was a very yellow, orange kind of theme. This is what matched the best. I could have pulled out some black paper that would have worked too because it was a kind of a black and yellow themed month. I'm not going to get too caught up in matching it perfect. Um, because I want to get the last year's albums wrapped up, I'm just not going to get caught up in it. Uh, I know for myself that when I am worried about getting caught up with a project, specifically my Project Life album, I usually have wrapped up already. Um, I usually have it wrapped up within the first couple weeks of January. Whenever I'm worried about getting a project done, going back and getting it done, 
I just tend to lose momentum with other projects. So I definitely want to just get this wrapped up. So I added the paper to October and then here is November. Now for November, I had photos printed and I needed to drop those in. So that's what you see here is I am just going through my photos. We were sick the majority of November. We got a stomach bug and a, the like three weeks of November, we were sick. It trickled through our house and one week Andrew was sick and then I was sick and then Violet was sick and then Kayla was sick. <laughs> so it just kind of trickled through our house and that was our entire November. So I have very little photos. In fact, that photo of Andrew laying there on the chair, we actually had to take him to the emergency room and it was a whole ordeal. So I don't have very many photos for November. So I'm not doing any extra stories in November. I'm just dropping these photos in. I have a few things in my calendar pocket and then that's going to be it for November. I will definitely do a little bit of embellishing here in just a little bit. I do have these three photos um, that I will probably, I actually, that will probably be the only extra photo that goes into November. So now for December, we're going to jump into December. Now I have a couple page protectors that are full page protectors because I do a December countdown and I will share that uh, probably on the blog post photos of this. Um, so I have that and then I will also need to add some pattern paper to December. So I'm just making sure that there's nothing else that I need pattern paper for that I can go ahead and jump in to December. Here's those three photos that will just, I'm going to do a traditional layout. You'll probably see that next week. I'm looking through a little bit of product to see if um, I can make something work. But what I realize is I'm just going to go ahead and get December set up. I pull out some um, December paper and then we're going to set up um, this one side of December. I actually really love the way this worked out. I ended up using some of my Ellie Edwards product and then um, I covered the back of my calendar and then in the three spots behind the calendar will be my Christmas countdown and that will be it. I will filter in some of my leftover photos into this one side of the pockets and then that will really be it. December never has that much because I do December daily. One thing that I really love during the seasonal uh, during seasonal times like fall or Christmas, um, any holidays like Halloween, those kinds of things, I really like to be able to be more creative in my Project Life album. One thing that I found when I started Project Life is that I missed traditional pages. Now, in recent years, I have gone back to doing traditional pages, meaning like the traditional way of scrapbooking where you have all the pattern paper and you do all of the, you know, layering and cutting and all of that. Um, I, I really enjoy that aspect of memory keeping, but I also, it's not realistic to stay caught up when you're doing traditional pages for every, specifically if you're doing more elaborate pages. It tends to not be realistic to keep up with so many different projects. And that is actually why I started Project Life to begin with was because I just couldn't keep up with three kids and all of the things that was happening in life. Um, I couldn't keep up with all of the projects I wanted to do. So I found Project Life as this very easy way to stay current with my with my memory keeping and not constantly feel like I was behind or like I was not getting the things done that I wanted to get done. But the aspect that I missed from memory keeping was it happens to be like in December or, you know, September, October, like these months that I wanted to be more creative and more seasonal. So I use pattern paper to create these months and it gives me enough of that creative seasonal pieces without uh, causing me to uh, end up really behind. So what I went and did, I went and grabbed my, these are containers that I have that hold monthly items, uh, particularly because I was getting Ali Edwards story by the months for so long. I have a lot of monthly themed product 
Uh, obviously, I have a lot for December because of December Daily, but I also just have a lot of like random December items. It worked out so amazing because some of my December items, the chipboard, happened to be this green and blue, and it happened to match this pattern paper that I have from Stampin' Up! perfectly. And so I really loved being able to use these items. I have the cards in there, and then you can see I have a variety of um, chipboard and some different things. In the other months, you'll see that there are a lot. It's a lot less than the December um, container. These are photo containers, four by six uh, photo containers. You can get them on in Amazon on Amazon as a set, and they actually come in a larger container. I will try to make sure that that is linked in my Amazon storefront under organization. And I just don't use the bigger container. You used to be able to get them at, also at, like Michael's, you could get them individually. I think also Michael's has the big pack of it, like the big thing that has the big container to it. I love it because it fits four by six cards, and then I just filter in anything that is monthly, and then I just have one for each month. So I also popped in my December three things card because all of last year I used that monthly card from Allie Edwards story kit that had the month and then three things. So December three things. You will see me in, I think in September, I filter in the September card that says September three things. This year for Project Life, I am using core kits. So my goal is all this year to use all the different mini and mini core kits that I have and I will probably filter in some pattern paper or some more seasonal items um, towards the end of the year when we're when we're celebrating more holiday type stuff. So here I am just uh, I'm just filtering through all of the things that I have. Like I said, December has more items and particularly because I'm still working on December daily, it has quite a few items in here. Um, but I really loved using the chipboard. I'm going to use one of the tags and it just so happened that um, one of the kits, probably last year's kit or the year before, um, was green and blue and it was so perfect to match this pattern paper. So I have a chipboard there um, and this is actually older. I can tell because it has the adhesive on the back. Um, her, her chipboard does not have adhesive on the back anymore. And I really miss that option because it's so much easier to have that adhesive on the back. Um, so I filtered that one on there. Then I have this tag here, which is newer. Um, I actually think her stories by the month, can, I think those are always the same color. Actually, now I'm think, now that I'm thinking about it, I think that the past, I don't know if it's changed this year because I don't get that kit anymore. Uh, but I think in past years that the story by the month kits are always the same color theme. So the other thing that I did on that top card is there's a chipboard piece that says around here in December. And then the vellum tag says words plus photos. And I ended up layering those together. I loved bringing in that pop of green on that top card. And then I loved that that blue chipboard said December. So I wasn't going to have that title card really say anything, uh, like say December. And so I thought it was great that I was able to layer those two together. And then also the December three things, the December is in green. And so that's really nice to bring in that little bit of green. Now on the calendar, when you see me do the calendar, and I'll talk through that in just a moment, I will bring in some red. So it will tie those together. And I wouldn't necessarily think to bring red, green, and blue together, but this really works out. And this pattern paper, I believe is still on the clearance, not the clearance rack, the online exclusive section for Stampin' Up. I believe you can still get that paper. It's a wintry paper. I really love it. It's really beautiful. I did some really beautiful sets of cards with it, but then I also have a little stash of it that I'm keeping in my pattern paper um, just because I think it's really beautiful. So I will also add a little bit of adhesive to the back of this vellum tag right under the chipboard. Um, it was a little bit difficult <laughs> 
to do the glue on the chipboard and then also the vellum tag but then i will also bring in my small stapler and we'll staple a few of those items the very next thing i'm going to do is take that six by six paper and i'm going to add it to the back of my eight and a half by 11 calendar on the other side and i will walk you through um, how I decorate the calendar and what I know I've gotten some questions again about what I use that calendar for so I will go over that but first we're going to grab the pattern the pattern paper we're going to pick some red paper and then even though it's six by six I'm going to cover the back of this so that I have that on the back and then the red will also match my calendar or my December countdown pages as well. do I put on my calendars? I do have several videos dedicated to putting my calendars together, specifically from last year when I started decorating them more. I used to not spend a lot of time decorating them or adding anything to them. I just filled them out. However, uh, last year I started using my stamps, uh, specifically my stories by the month stamps, and my Ali Edwards stamps, it became a way for me to use more of my product in my albums and be a little bit more creative. Now, the thing that I put on the calendars are items like if we have a dentist appointment or um, if one of the kids have a field trip, usually things that I'm not necessarily documenting. I'm not taking photos of me going to the dentist. I'm not taking photos of, um, like, specifically today, Violet has a field trip going to uh, the high school because she'll be going into high school next year. I'll write that on our monthly calendar, but I don't, I'm not going with her on that, and so I probably won't have any photos of her for that. The only photos I would have is if she happens to see Kayla there, and Kayla thinks to take a photo, which probably won't happen because... My kids don't think to take photos. <laughs> uh, however, if for some reason she did take a photo, that photo would probably just end up in Violet's album because it, that's not necessarily my story, right? It's not something that I was participating in today, um, but it's something that happened in our family. So on our January calendar, I'll write that Violet had a field trip to the high school. Um, so those kinds of things, they're really more of a placeholder for just everyday kinds of things. In January, also, um, another thing that has happened is Esau, uh, my husband, he's worked a lot of 12-hour shifts. Um, a lot of his work has changed around this month. And so I will note that on the calendar. Again, it's not something that I'm taking a photo of necessarily, but it is one of those micro stories that are happening in our everyday life that I want to just jot down. Now, there are definitely months, and you're going to see throughout this particular video, that there are months that there's really not anything written down on the calendar, or I don't go back and fill things out. And that's because it's not something that I'm totally worried about. The other thing that my calendar does is it works as a placeholder for the backside for extra items that I want to keep. Um, cards or just little pieces of life that I don't really need to like make an entire layout about, but I want to keep. The other thing that I do is I add, um, if I need a place to tell an extra story um, in, uh, in not October, in... Yeah, October, I have that photo of Andrew, and because it's in a different um, orientation than what I normally do, 
I'm going to stick it right on the back of that calendar and make a like a layout for that photo. So it works as a couple different things for me. I've done this since I got married. I did not do this in my albums before. So I have two um, yearly albums before I got married. And then when we got married, I started doing, I actually, I don't think I did this until I had Kayla and I would document things like milestones for her, you know, when she would roll over or her first steps. I think that's actually when I started incorporating a calendar into our, um, into our albums. So then I just took a gel a pen, a red one, and I just wrote down a few things. I need to go back in my calendar and look at a few things to write some more things down, but I knew um, a bunch of times Legally Blonde happened, and so I wrote that down. So that is December. Again, I will share photos of uh, my December countdown pages. Uh, maybe I'll do that um, maybe you've already seen those. Maybe I'll do that here. All right. I thought I would jump in and just share these pages. These are the countdown pages that will go at the end of my, of my album on my project life album for December. See, it starts on uh, 25. These are products that I've created. So I used them in the project life app, but I also provide a physical copy of this. So in case you wanted to do it in a physical way you could print them out and do it. I just use them in the app and that's available to my membership group. You will notice that I go from day 21 to day 20 and uh, or to day 19. I skipped 20 this year on accident. But you can see I just pop in different types of photos. This is just a countdown till Christmas. Um, some of these photos will make it into my December daily and some of them won't. So that Mucinex picture of the medicine, that won't make it into December daily. The uh, penguin cupcake is just a Instagram post I sent Kayla because she likes penguins and I popped that in there. At the very beginning, there was a Coke can, the Christmas Coke um, can, and I did that. Um, the stand mixer will make it into my December daily album, but then the photo of the wet leaves and the stairs won't. Um, and so this, this is just a way for me to end my album in December and not have to put a lot of thought. I just do this throughout the month um, in the app, in the Project Life app, and uh, I am able to just do a little countdown keep a few memories of December in our Project Life album, and then that's how I wrap up the year. So those are the countdown pages that I was referring to. So now we'll jump back to November, and I'm just going to do some embellishing. Again, I'm going to get my November um, box out with all of my November items, and then we're just going to add a few things. I'm not going to add a lot to November because in November I used an entire collection um, from Tracy Reed. And so I had a lot of, of bits and bobs to add to November. And again, I didn't have that much happening in November because we were sick. So I didn't take a lot of photos and I didn't have a lot of spaces to add anything extra. together. And that is that was my goal when I first started layering these stickers as I was going to do three of them. And then that was going to be it. What I end up doing on this photo is layering a whole bunch of them down the side. And that is because I am just I'm really my goal this year is to use the product that I have. I feel like my craft room, my craft space, 
my studio, it has filled up with a lot of product and I'm not using it. And so I wish I would have spaced it out better. I think I will do that technique again in the future, but I've never done that before where I layered them all down the side of a photo and I love the way it looked. I just wish I would have spaced it out better. Uh, once I stuck the sticker down on the photo, that was it. There was no pulling it up. And so I couldn't adjust, um, which is fine. I, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but that is something that I think that I will attempt again in the future is to do that, uh, the whole side of the photo to have that, those word phrase stickers. I think it's a great way to use those up. Um, but I really love the word phrase stickers. I love the chipboard. It's one of the reasons that I started getting Ali Edward kits to begin with is because I wanted to build up my stash of chipboard and word phrase stickers. And I think that they're so easy to add, a, you know, a couple things here and there to different photos. And I love being able to do that. So that is what that is. Ali Edward kits are a great kit to do that if you are wanting to build your stash up. And uh, you will definitely see me using those types of things as I go through this year in particular, even with using the core kits that I'm using, you will see me use the word phrase stickers and the chipboard pieces throughout my album. I think I add one more word phrase. I think eventually I will add, maybe it's right here where I will add one more word phrase sticker to the pumpkins. Um, again, I just want to use that up. I also want to pull in um, some of the browns. The other thing that's really great about Ali Edwards pro products is they tend to match a lot of things. It's like I always love Stampin' Up products, their cardstock and their designs, because I find that it matches a lot of other things on the market. And it's the same with Ali Edward products. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into October and what I'm going to uh, finish up with October. Again, for October, I have this spot here where I will need uh, to do a layout. I thought it would be great to add a three by four card to this spot. That'll make that layout come together really easily. And it just so happened, again, that Ali Edwards products work perfect, um, that those colors work great. And that is a spot that I will either do sticker paper where I will type out the story or I will just do the hand. Uh, I will just use my handwriting um, and then I'm going to pop a chipboard piece. I was not letting the glue dry. I was just, you can see right there, I added the glue and then I put it right in the pocket. I, d I don't recommend working on your album like this. Um, I am working just right directly on top of my album because I'm filming um, and because of the tasks that I'm doing where I'm just adding a few things. I'm adding different embellishments so I don't need to take everything out. Uh, but I don't recommend working on gluing over like on top of your album. I definitely got glue a couple places I didn't mean to. Um, and I was, I wasn't in a hurry. I wasn't necessarily trying to really rush through this, but this is for me, this is some tedious work where I'm just adding, I'm going in and I'm adding, you know, a few things. I'm trying to get my pockets filled and I'm trying to wrap up the project. Um, so I wasn't being as careful. This side here with Violet, this was her going to a dance. I probably should have added another photo of her and I could definitely do that. I end up liking the cards. I really like the cards that I found to go in these pockets. I was just going... Yeah, I was just going to do a title card, but then I found this card here that says loving and it has like the six different boxes. So I will add the journaling there. I love the sunflower card. Uh, just it definitely is violet for sure, that sunflower card. So then I will also add another card on the other side. I could add another photo of her, but at this point, I really don't want to mess with it. I just want to wrap this project up. I want to wrap up my album for last year. I want to get the journaling done, get all the photos in and feel good about it. So I'm not going to, I don't want to make it more complicated than it needs to be. So I'll add a couple things to Violet's 
photo here and then we will wrap up October. right here of my album is stories of home which I do every year in my album it is a uh, feature that I do inside of the membership group we focus on it once a year telling stories from your home and documenting uh, your ho home and the way home changes and I've done this for many years and I love it so that section I definitely need to journal and there will be I need to take a little bit of extra time um, to finish that up. All the photos are there and the items are there, but I just need to do the journaling. So here I'm just trying to pick out some um, cards that will go with these photos. I end up not using any of this stuff. These photos didn't happen in September and so I don't really want to highlight September with them and I just realized I need to move on. So this section here, what I'm doing, I was in my album for about an hour and a half one evening and really my goal of this section is to just be able to quickly put together the things that are quick, adding pattern paper, adding embellishments. I know that journaling is going to take longer, so I'm going to do that in a separate setting. And then doing both of those um, standalone pages, the 12 by 12 and then the 8.5 by 11, I will do that at a separate time as well. So we're going to dive into July now. August was already done. I had already spent a lot of time in August. Um, and so that was, I didn't need to do anything for that. For July, I really just needed to embellish. I really had everything else done. Um, and then I, just the journaling, which will be separate. I'll be doing that next week. So here is a photo. Um, I've talked about being in a Facebook group for our community, our town. Our town is a little historical town and it has very a little population. We have between like 800 and 1,000 people and we have a Facebook group that's a little bit difficult to get into. You really have to like have you either grown up here or be living here. And oftentimes they post photos in that group and this was a set of photos that was posted from somebody who was... Um, flying, you know, they were in a plane and they were flying and they took some photos. I saved those photos and then I put them in the Project Life app. I used this design, this collage with the four six by six photos. And then I'm just going to add these hearts. Now the hearts, they don't necessarily match July perfectly. I think that red and yellow one is more like an orangey yellow or an orangey red. And then it has the yellow on it. And then there's a blue and a gray, but the sentiment on it was really nice. And so I used them. And then over here on this side of the page are four photos from actually the same event, the same day. So we went to uh, the creek. We Kayla was doing some rehearsal stuff for musical theater and we had a couple hours. And so we took the other two kids to the creek and they played in the creek and we had lunch. And then we picked up Kayla. 
So this is what the end of July looks like. And sometimes that's the other thing that I will do in my Project Life album is sometimes the front and the back page, the two pages that I sandwich the month together with, sometimes they're the same, they're multiple photos from the same event. They're not all different. So for July, we definitely had some different things that were happening. Obviously we were, um, you know, we had summer break and the kids were, in the pool and hanging out but we also had really lazy days where everybody was just inside and on devices and we were watching movies together and there's not a lot of times that I take a lot of photos in those moments and so I don't mind taking the backside of July the very end of July and filtering all of those photos from that one event I don't always need to make it a standout event sometimes those are just my July photos right and then the insert there, the one side is Kayla and Esau going to see Descendants, uh, the, a local musical. And then the other side is Kayla starting to drive. And so that was a featured story. And then this photo here is from our local county fair, which is a really big deal in our county. Kayla took this photo uh, when they were riding a ride. All three of them were riding a ride. I don't know, as we go through uh, parenthood and and seasons changing, uh, this is definitely a moment for me where we used to go to the fair and it was a big production and you took all the kids and it was keeping them together and keeping everybody happy together. And now the last two years, um, I've bought tickets for them to go to the fair and I say, go have fun. And they run all over the place and they go on rides and I don't know what they're doing or where they're at. <laughs> and so this was a fun photo that Kayla took and sent to me. And I loved it. I, I did it in 12 by 12 and then I did it in black and white. I just put a little sticker on there that said fair and then um, photo from Kayla. I added that July three things into that pocket. And um, it's the thing is, is with that July card it is yellow and so I wanted to add a couple other splashes of yellow I really did a very heavy red white and blue themed month and so I wanted to add a couple splashes of yellow and you'll see how I do that here is the calendar page that is probably my favorite calendar page of all of last year because I created that pocket and then I have some of the tickets and stuff from the fair and I put ribbon on them and then stuck them in that on that calendar and I love the way that turned out so this is another 12 by 12 photo I get my 12 by 12 photos printed in the Project Life app. This was of Kayla and Vi um, Kayla and Andrew swimming. Violet wasn't in the photo. And I'm just going to use the actual photo as my base. I'm going to add July Joys. It's going to pop in a little bit of that yellow. And so I just feel like that pulls some of the month together. I'm going to grab some of my slick writers. Now, I tested this out on just a photo that I had sitting on my desk that I wasn't going to need. And thank goodness I did. The first slick writer that I pulled out was completely dry. And what well, wasn't completely dry, it was streaky dry. So I threw that one away, pulled out another one. I believe this one is from Ali Edwards. And a slick writer is a pen that can write on slick surfaces. Now, Sharpies can do the same thing, but Sharpie pens will yellow with time. So slick writers are specifically meant to write on photos. You can get them. I get mine from Ali Edwards. Um, and it is just a fine tip black marker I'm adding a little bit of journaling now again if I was spending a lot of time with this project if I was in the middle of July if I was working on this in the middle of July or even into August I would have used a white pen and my journaling would have been maybe a little bit funner I would have been a little bit more creative with it I just jotted down a few notes about uh, getting the kids, again, another parenting, I don't know, milestone. Uh, this year we got the kids a pool pass to the local pool and they just went whenever they wanted. 
and it was fantastic. Um, they just would be like, I'm going swimming. They would take their swim bag. They would ride their bikes to the pool and then they would come home when they were done and it was fantastic. And so I just wrote a little note about that. Again, it's not the best. My handwriting is not the best on that photo. It is not perfect by any means, um, but it's, it's, better to have it done than perfect. That's my goal with this album. There was another 12 by 12 photo on the back side. It was of fair. And then there were two ribbons. I actually entered memory keeping items and Andrew entered a few things and got some ribbons and I just stuck them onto that photo. I don't really need to hang those up anywhere, you know, for me. Andrew hung his up in his room, but I don't need to hang mine up in my bedroom. So I just added them to uh, the Project Life album because this is a Project Life album. It is meant to contain the things of life, not just photos. That's what I love about Project Life. I love the way things can layer in here, and I love adding pieces of our actual life and photos to go along with it. So it is my favorite thing. So I'm just wrapping up July here um, with the last few um, piece, you know, embellishment pieces. Now, the last two things that I need to do for last year's album is I need to finish those two standalone layouts. So the 12 by 12 one and then the eight and a half by 11. Super simple um, for the most part. And then I need to finish up my journaling. My journaling will be done by next week. Uh, for Project Life Weekly for the very beginning of January. The last video for January 2024 will be the journaling and we'll be talking about journaling and different ways to tackle journaling. It is the hardest part of my Project Life album, I feel like, is the journaling. I'm not great at it. So we'll be tackling that. So make sure you check out Project Life Weekly. I also have a playlist for uh, Project Life 2023 and Project Life 2024 that feature all of the Project Life videos that I've done for those years. So if you are catching this in a later time and not in real time, you can check out those playlists. Also, make sure you check out the membership. I know I mentioned it at the very beginning, but I would love to have you join and join in on the membership uh, perks, seeing some of my other projects that I do, like editorial layouts and um, my pages for my kids and using the Project Life app. That would be amazing. There are two other videos here that you can check out. And then I would love for you to give this video a thumbs up. It helps you to be nice to me. You can also subscribe to the channel for more memory keeping projects if you would like. And I will catch you next week in my next video. I hope everybody has a wonderful day.